Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm glad you could join me again in our soil mechanics uh, journey. Today, we are going to uh, take, uh, uh, take a look at a very important uh, topic for geotechnical uh, engineers, and this is the topic of lateral uh, earth pressure. Okay. Uh, lateral earth pressure are pressures that act on the size of the structures or behind the retaining walls. So calculating the lateral earth pressure is essential in order to design the structures like retaining walls, the bridge abutments, uh, the basement walls, and any earth supporting systems. The lateral earth pressure is important because it also affects the consolidation uh, behavior and the strength of the soil. There are two classical measures uh, to calculate the lateral earth pressure. So the first one is the Coulomb's lateral earth pressure theory, and another one is the Rankin's lateral earth pressure theory. So Coulomb was a French engineer and really smart individual. Its method was actually developed in, 19, uh, in 1776, uh, prior to the Rankin's method. Uh, well, Rankin's method simplified Coulomb's theory with few assumptions. So its theory was developed uh, uh, in the, uh, um, 1,800 years, but we still use it today. So both measures are very old, but they are still very good and valid for a lot of uh, conditions. And they also uh, measures will be covered uh, in more details uh, in this lecture. Now let's uh, make some comparisons between water and the soil. So for, for water in the state of static equivalent, any small uh, element bears the hydraulic pressure in both in the horizontal and vertical direction. So the water is normally an isotropic material, which means the property of the water are, are the same in all directions. So we know the vertical stress equal to lateral or horizontal stress as P equal to rho W uh, times G times C, and also E equals to gamma W times C. And the soil uh, is not hydrostatic. So the horizontal stress at the rest conditions are normally less than the vertical stress. So although there's isotropic soil, the majority of the soil are actually uh, in the anisotropic state. We, on, we only know the vertical stress or the stress of the soil, uh, gamma Z, uh, but we don't know what is the value of the lateral pressure but we could find the relationship between the lateral earth pressure and vertical earth pressure or stress. So here, the ratio sigma h prime over sigma v prime, that's the coefficient of lateral earth pressure. And it is an important correlation parameter. So normally, normally we call this uh, ratio as k. Uh, so which is the lateral earth pressure coefficient? So if we know the k and vertical effects, Strength, then we are able to get the lateral stress using this K uh, multiplies uh, the vertical effective stress. So that's lateral as pressure coefficient is going to change uh, depending on what lateral as pressure uh, case we are dealing with. Uh, each of these uh, as pressure coefficient is computed differently. And we will discuss how you can calculate this coefficient in the later part. So this case uh, is a rigid uh, abutment, including the uh, bridge deck. So the soil is compacted because the geometry is symmetric. Obviously, that's asymmetric. So there's no lateral movement of the soil, or even there's no tendency of soil to move. So this is the so-called the KO state or at the right state, and there are no lateral strands uh, within the soil. So if the or uh, does not move, uh, then the soil is in an disturbed state and it is in equivalent. So the inside your horizontal pressure could be calculated uh, using the at rest as pressure coefficient, KO. So for soil element at any depth, say here, uh, we know the vertical pressure, uh, that's the, uh, that's the same, same way equal to gamma Z. So we also know by definition, the KO equal to 
KO equal to sigma H uh, divided by sigma V. So sigma H would be uh, expressed as KO times uh, gamma Z. And the equivalent force or the thrust, sometimes we call it thrust, uh, acting on the wall is actually the area of the uh, force uh, or pressure triangle. So if you take the area of this uh, pressure triangle, you'll get the equivalent force acting on the wall. So if we do the calculation, uh, the area of the triangle will be KO gamma H uh, times uh, the, the wall height, uh, this H, and divided by two. Uh, so eventually we get uh, this expression. So the, the lateral force or stress equal to uh, half of KO times gamma um, times uh, H uh, square. And we also need to know it's normally for this uh, triangle, pressure distribution, it normally, the force normally acts, acts at one third from the base of the wall. So that's one third from the base of the wall. The coefficient of earth pressure at rest is an important parameter uh, in soil mechanics, as it is often used to estimate the lateral stress of soil mass which are in equivalent uh, below the ground. So the table, this table should give us a range of values of KO for different soil types. So either it's for dense sand, for loose sand, or for uh, NC clay, or for the uh, overly consolidated clay, uh, we are able to find the corresponding empirical uh, values. There are also some uh, classical formulas uh, to uh, have some students join in right now. So there are also some classical formulas to com compute the KO. The first one is, uh, is the expression from the Jackie. So most engineers uh, tend to use this relationship to approximate it for normally consolidated soil. So if we, the soil is in the normally consolidated state, uh, we use uh, this uh, expression. We will discuss uh, more for the, the soil state, either it's normally consolidated or over consolidated in the, in the lecture uh, nine and 10. Um, and also be aware of that is the joint uh, friction angle. So this is not the unjoint friction angle. So if it's unjoint friction angle, then we don't have this uh, prime uh, symbol. So, on the other hand, if the soil is over consolidated, then we just have to add uh, this term uh, here to adjust the formula. And with this OCR factor in there, uh, it's going to increase the at rest of pressure coefficient. So which means for the uh, OC soil, uh, the KO is normally greater than the KO for the NC soil, yeah? Um, so what's five again? Uh, five the, prime? The five prime is the friction angle, effective friction angle of the soil. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and also it's for the joint friction angle, like I said, that's the joint uh, friction angle of the soil. So yeah. if you do the test for unjoint test, then you need to use unjoint friction angle in this uh, formula. Okay, so, um, so is that formula to drain um, the friction angle? Which one, this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's the joint friction angle. Joint, okay, sweet, thank you. Yeah. Um, this is the typical retaining wall. A retaining wall is a structure that holds or retains the soil and prevents it from sliding or eroding away. It's also used to retain the soil at different levels on each side. So it's retain the soil. So on the right hand side, it also retain the soil in the left hand side. And it's designed to resist the pressure of the soil that it is holding back. Normally there are three states of lateral earth pressure. Uh, at the rest state, the active state and passive state. So active state is the wall. Uh, here we have to be careful. Active state is the wall moves away from the retained mass. So obviously if you, uh, you have a wall here, you have the soil uh, in the right-hand side, there's a tendency for, for the wall to move away from the soil. 
So in this way, you could generate active uh, as pressure. And this active as pressure is the minimum theoretical net pressure that a given soil mass will exert on a returning wall that will move or rotate away from soil until the soil active state is reached. So in this case, the soil is in uh, extension and we, we have the corresponding active pressure coefficient, Ka. So the soil is in extension state in the, uh, for the Ka case. Uh, on the other hand, for the passive pressure is the maximum lateral resistance that a given soil mass can offer to a retaining wall that is being pushed towards the soil mass. So because the wall, if the wall still, there's a tendency for the wall to move towards the soil. Uh, so it will provide some resistance, so-called resistant force. So in that way, it generates some passive uh, pressure within the soil state. So the soil in this case will be in compression for the passive condition with passive pressure as pressure coefficient, Kp. The last one uh, is the at rest pressure and we have discussed in the previous slide. So for this case, the ball uh, does not move at all and the corresponding as pressure coefficient is zero, K zero and the system is in equilibrium and there's no movement of the soil. So, so in general, there are three uh, state. One is the active, uh, the other one is KO, and last one is the passive state. And for this uh, lecture, we mainly uh, need to use the active as pressure coefficient or the passive as pressure coefficient to calculate either the, the, the pressure distribution along the wall or the equivalent thrust uh, acting on the wall. So one of the most common theories uh, that the engineers use today to calculate the active and passive earth pressure is the Rankin theory. So it's a stress field condition that predicts active and passive earth pressure. There are some critical assumptions uh, made by the Rankin, uh, like the soil is non-cohesive, uh, dry, isotropic, and uh, homogeneous. So it's mainly for the sandy soil. And also the back view is uh, horizontal and the wall has to be uh, vertical. Uh, and it also neglects the friction between the wall and the soil. So it assumes, oh, sorry. So it assumes here, it will be a smooth case. So it ne neglects the friction between the wall and the soil. In other words, it's a smooth wall. So according to this method, the only friction that exists uh, in the system is between the soil particles themselves. So actually we know this isn't true in the real life, but uh, it's an assumption uh, we make to simplify the problem. And lastly, the last assumption is the failure occurs as a sliding wedge along an assumed failure plane by seat So if we uh, look at, so this one, this one, that will be the seed. So it will, uh, if the soil, if, uh, if you push the wall, if there, uh, if it's a generate, then uh, this one, that's active uh, pressure. If that's the passive uh, lateral pressure, then the failure plane will be a flat plane and it's like a generate a wedge and with the uh, assumed failure angle, that's the seed, seed is shown here. So if we uh, look at this soil element at any typical position, say, so that's the soil element, this principal stress, uh, the sigma one, uh, sigma one, sigma one equal to sigma z, and sigma three, sigma three equal to sigma h, and also equal to sigma x. Since the surface, uh, that's, that's horizontal, and the wall is smooth, so there's no shear stress uh, generated on the vertical or horizontal planes. Otherwise, for this soil element, you will have the uh, shear stress component if you land uh, in some other uh, statics uh, units, also some mechanics unit. But this one, all the force 
the, uh, the principal force, principal strength on the soil element, because no shear stress uh, component. So if we continue to look into the soil, this soil element, so that's, we take the soil, that's, that's all element and put it here. So it has the vertical, vertical pressure and also the horizontal pressure. Now, uh, cool, uh, ranking they used the MER circle and also MER Coulomb uh, fill envelope to derive the light pressure for the active and passive state. So MER circle we have learned uh, from the how to be like a three or possibly like electric four. Uh, the MER circle is a graphical presentation of the stresses at uh, a material point. So each point on the MER circle gives an normal strength. So each point on this MER circle uh, that gives the normal and shear stress on a particular plane at the material point. So the point where the MER circle intersects the normal stress, uh, which is the X uh, axis, are the principal stress. And also the planes of the major and minor principal stress have the zero uh, shear stresses. So we know for uh, this case, for this soil element, uh, here, this point, that will be the, that's, that's, that's the same way or same one, because there's no shear stress. If you have the shear stress, then it will be it will either moon upward or moon downward, because you have the tall four component here. So because uh, since the state is divided by a decrease in sigma edge prime, so if this is same way equal to uh, sigma one, Obviously, this will be the sigma h or sigma h prime equal to sigma three. So this will be the minor principal strength and same way that's the uh, major principal strength. So when the more, if the wall moves further away, so now this, uh, it will generate active earth pressure. So active earth pressure is the wall moves away from the soil. If, if it's moved further, then what will happen? Because the same way as the self weight roughly generated by the self weight of the soil. So this same way prime will be a constant. It doesn't change. If you move further, uh, the wall further away from the soil, then this point will gradually change. It will reduce. Also, you uh, tend to release the stress. So this sigma edge will gradually, uh, gradually uh, move uh, in the left hand side. So, and then the corresponding MERS circle. So if we use red line moves here, then you are able to draw another uh, MERS circle. If you move further, the wall further, then you can generate the next MERS circle. And eventually you will generate a MERS circle that touch the failure envelope. So this will be the ultimate, uh, this will be the ultimate state. So we divide a failure plan uh, at this state. So at this moment, uh, the Ka uh, or the active state uh, that's fully uh, developed. And this is also, we are, uh, we are able to calculate the Ka. So the corresponding stress is called the active uh, earth pressure. So only this point, that's active earth pressure and that's uh, sigma H, final sigma H prime. And that's where we are able to develop the uh, Ka. Uh, so if we connect this uh, sigma edge prime uh, with the tangent point between the MER circle and the failure envelope line. So here, that's the angle. So then the corresponding angle, theta, this is the corresponding angle, theta, uh, to the horizontal equals to 45 plus uh, phi divided by two. So this is an important uh, conclusion uh, as we need to uh, we need to remember. So now uh, the sigma h prime that could be expressed uh, k a times uh, sigma v prime. So don't need to be uh, panic uh, about this uh, the whole process, but hopefully you you can roughly. Uh, understand how, what, uh, which point we are able to calculate the lateral uh, active 
lateral earth pressure and according to the Mars circle and also Coulomb feeding envelope. So the simple way, that's a constant. If we gradually uh, move, the, uh, move the wall further away from the soil, uh, eventually the Mars circle will touch the failure envelope. And if we connect this failure, uh, the, the tangent point and this uh, corresponding sigma three prime, then this seed uh, gives us uh, the corresponding angle. And this sigma three prime at this point that's the one we need to calculate. That's the so-called horizontal earth pressure. And it could be expressed as Ka times uh, C wave prime. Uh, and also, uh, by the way, the active and passive earth pressure coefficient both represent the terminal failure conditions of the soil. So you are not go going to change the resistance anymore once that failure plan divides. So you won't, uh, you won't be any value uh, greater than this sigma h prime. So for the more colon uh, feeding envelope, so previously we have learned the inclined angle with the horizontal line is the uh, friction angle of the soil here. So we already have discussed uh, in the previous uh, lectures and also in the tutorial class. So if this is the more colon feeding envelope, so this included angle, that's the friction angle of the soil. And the intercept uh, with the vertical axis, that's the cohesion C. So through the tangent point between this faded amylo, uh, between this amylo and the monoclonal circle, we can draw a vertical line and also align to the sigma three uh, and align to the center. So that's the center point of the uh, center point of the Marconi circle. So according to the, some geometry or relationship, we are able to find some uh, interesting relationship. So here, let's see, this is phi. It's a phi angle. So obviously this lens, so from here to here, that's C times uh, cotan in phi. So C times, Cotan in phi. Uh, that's from here to here. And how about the distance from here to here? So that will be the half uh, sim one plus sim three. Because here that's uh, sim three, here that's sim, sim one. And if the middle point between sim one and sim three, that will be uh, half sim one plus sim three. So by now, if we uh, take the sum of both lines, it will be the, the, this lines right here. And if we look at uh, this triangle, so this lines uh, times sine seed, oh, sorry, uh, sine phi, you know, this angle, that's phi. So if this, uh, this lines times sine phi, what it gives us times sine phi, it gives us and this, this lines, right? This lens, oh, if we look further, that's the radius of this Mars circle. And the radius uh, could be expressed as uh, half of sim one minus sim three. So that's sim one, that's sim three. So sim one minus sim three, that's the uh, diameter. So if we take the half, that's the radius, sim one minus sim three. So this uh, expression, that's valid. So if we do the further conversion, uh, we express uh, sigma three. So we just uh, break the, this, uh, this bracket and then express the sigma three in terms of sigma one and other component, we got this one. So sigma three times one plus sine five equal to sigma one times one minus sine five uh, minus uh, to C times cosine phi. So in this way, we express the sigma three in terms of sigma one. And if you do, if we do the further conversion, uh, eventually we get this expression. We get this expression. So sigma three equal to sigma one uh, times one. Uh, so here, actually what I did, you see, we move this 
one plus n phi to the right hand side. So each term divided by one plus n phi. So the first first term will be this one, seven one times one minus n phi divided by one plus n phi, and the second term will be cosine phi divided by one plus n phi. So that's the equivalent to this one. This is uh, the second term. So if we do the further conversion, eventually we come up this expression. So sim three equal to ka uh, sim one minus two c times square root of ka. This is the, a really a really important conclusion. Don't be panic about the derivation process. Uh, we need to uh, fully understand uh, this conclusion and also the physical meaning of the symbol within this expression. So that's the active pressure expression. And within uh, this expression, this uh, Ka, uh, Ka equals to one minus sine phi divided by one plus sine phi. So that's the active, that's the expression for active as pressure coefficient. So normally for any equations, the fresh angle of the sun will be given. So you are able to calculate the Ka straight away. And this single one, that's the major principle uh, stress for the active case. So that will be equivalent to the same way. The same way you know that's equal to gamma h or gamma prime h. So you are able to get uh, calculate this the same one as well and see that's the cohesion of the soil is normally given as well. So you know the Ka is in one and C, you are able to calculate the active uh, as pressure. Uh, and also the angle of the wedge failure plane to the horizontal is seat in this one. So I already showed you before. So that's seat. And seat also equal to uh, 45 plus uh, five divided by two. So it's the angle is here. So it's the angle uh, between the line that connects the tangent point and sigma three to the horizontal line. So it's the angle between this line and this line. So some of you may wonder why is the, uh, this, this uh, 45 plus five divided by two. Uh, so actually that's some relationship within, still within uh, this triangle. Because that's a 90, 90 degree. We can easily work out uh, this angle. That, or this seat will be 45 plus five divided by two. So uh, when the pressure against the wall is said to be in the active ranking, ranking state, there are two sides of failure planes. So if we go back to this uh, mirror circle, we have the seat above the horizontal line, the seat above the horizontal line. And we also actually, we have another seat below the horizontal line. So these planes, so that corresponds to these two sides of the failure planes. So these planes are inclined at 45 plus five divided by two to the horizontal. And at this stage, the soil has yielded in the active state and is in plastic equivalent. So the previous case is the non-cohesive case. So that's roughly for the uh, clay or finer sealed case. Uh, sorry, that's for the uh, that's for the uh, sand or gravel case. And now, how about the, for the cohesive soil like clay that have uh, cohesion that have cohesion? So if we have the clay in the backfield, then it presents some unique challenges. So the cohesion, we know the clay has some cohesion. So the cohesion in the soil resists the increase in the lateral pressure. So it must be accounted for. So it, is, it essentially acts in a manner that tries to hold the soil up by itself. The active stress without cohesion is uh, Ka times comma H. So this is the, uh, this stress triangle we, we learned before. If we didn't consider cohesion, the, then that's the pressure distribution, lateral pressure distribution. And we know uh, the expression, that's the, Ka times comma H. And the cohesion does not want the soil to tip over. So we are going to subtract the cohesion component from our lateral pressure. 
and cohesion component will assume to be a uniform load on the wall equals to two times the cohesion times the square root uh, of our uh, active uh, earth pressure coefficient. So that's the uh, cohesion component. So if we do the math, so this, uh, this diagram, this force uh, distribution minus this force distribution, uh, then eventually we can uh, the final uh, force uh, distribution. Uh, this is like, so in the top, uh, we end up uh, a zone near the top of the wall, this, where the soil is trying to hold the wall up with the cohesion, or it's like uh, thickness, and so we call that the tension zone. So this part, the dash line, that's the tension zone. So this is the zone where the wall and soil are trying to pull away from each other as opposed to down here, uh, down here in the bottom part, uh, where the soil is trying to push the wall over. So the active pressure on the wall is given by, will be given by uh, this expression, Ka uh, gamma H minus 2C times square root of K. So it's this term minus and this term equals to uh, this one. And if some, for some cases, we are required to calculate the depth of this, uh, the depth of this tension crack, uh, crack. So the depth to which the tension cracks develop according to the, this Rankine theory could be deducted by setting this uh, lateral earth pressure expression equal to zero. So we set this uh, sigma A equal to zero. And then this, then we are able to express this Z as Z zero equal to two C uh, K. Uh, times square root of Ka divided by uh, Ka. And that's the final expression for the depth of uh, tension crank. Because for some cases, you are required to calculate uh, the depth of the tension, uh, tension crack. So that will be the expression. Uh, in practice, the cracks are likely to develop in the tension zone and part of the stress distribution above the Z0 slowly uh, neglected. So for some calculation is uh, is uh, omitted from the calculation. So uh, we just follow the requirement. So in this case, the equivalent force. So in this case, we just calculate the, the thrust or the pressure distribution for this force triangle. The equivalent force or the active stress uh, is the sum of the area of the triangle stress diagram. Uh, because the summation of the area is like the integration of the stress and it gives us the force. So the area of this triangle is simply equal to the equation uh, Pa equal to half Ka times H minus uh, Z0 squared. So if you do the calculation, eventually you come up, we will come up with this expression. And this results in Pa uh, is acting at a height of uh, one third from the, uh, this uh, from this uh, height of the compression of this zone. So it's not one third of an inch. It's not one third of an inch. Uh, instead, it's one third of inch minus z zero because we are calculating uh, this part. So you see it's act at a height of one, uh, one third of edge, but edge is the height of compressive zone. So that's the height of the compressive zone. So it's actually ought to be edge minus uh, Z zero for this case. So by now we have learned uh, the expression for the, the Ka, the active as pressure coefficient, and also the expression for the active pressure and the depth of the tension crack and also the active stress or thrust or active force acting on the wall. And with the corresponding expressions, we also consider the different case, uh, some case for the cohesionless soil and some expression for the cohesive soil. So, but those are all for active state. Now uh, let's have a look uh, for the passive uh, case. So if on the other hand, the wall is moved against the soil mass, 
So wool is moving towards the soil. So there will be lateral compression of the soil. So in this figure, uh, the same edge, again, the same way doesn't change. The same way uh, normally created by the self-weight. If there's no surcharge, it's normally uh, self-weight self of the soil. So in this way, only the signal edge uh, will gradually change. So signal edge, if you push, uh, push the wall towards the soil, so obviously, according to the common sense, the signal edge prime will gradually increase. And so again, if we look at uh, this uh, uh, more circle and uh, more column faded envelope, so again, this point, there will be a uh, similar edge prime. So in the, in the beginning, the same way, similar edge prime will be here. So here, that's, what we, that's the original uh, equivalent state, and that's the KO state, and that's the corresponding more circle. And the soil element or the soil doesn't fail at all because this, uh, this more circle doesn't touch the feed envelope. So that's the KO state. So if we just slightly move the wall towards the soil, then what will happen is that the sigma edge will gradually increase. So it will, so sigma, so that's a sigma positive. So sigma edge will gradually uh, go to the right hand side. So what will happen is that the mer circle will gradually shrink. You see, that will be the first uh, mer circle. So if we move the wall further, it will shrink further until is even overlap with the same way point. If you move the wall even further, then the same edge prime could be even uh, greater than the, the same way prime. But since it still doesn't uh, touch the failure envelope, uh, which means the soil still doesn't reach, hasn't reached um, the failure state. So we need to push the wall even further. So we push the wall even further. Uh, so in this way, uh, the mer circle will gradually increase further until it touch this failure envelope. So this is similar as the uh, active uh, active case. So once it's touched failure envelope, which means uh, is it has reached the state when the plastic equivalent is reached. Uh, and this sigma edge uh, prime, for this condition, this sigma edge prime becomes the maximum uh, value and it will be the major stress uh, sigma one. And this sigma way, that will be the minor stress uh, uh, sigma three. So you may notice that in the previous case, uh, sigma way, in the active case, the sigma way is sigma one. So sigma one and sigma three, uh, it has no correlation uh, with the sigma edge or sigma way. It's just the greater of sigma edge or sigma way. So if sigma edge that's greater than sigma way, then that will be the principle. That's, that's the uh, major principle stress. That's sigma one. Otherwise, if sigma way that's greater than sigma edge prime, then sigma way will be uh, equivalent to sigma one. So it's always just the larger of the two. So now the horizontal stress is the larger stress, and now it becomes C1, and vertical stress becomes uh, sigma 3 Because this angle, so that's the passive uh, as pressure. And now we, we need to just uh, uh, find the corresponding failure angle. And again, through the sigma edge prime, and we draw a line which connects uh, the tangent point between the failure envelope and the merge circle and the horizontal and including the angle between this line and the horizontal line that gives us uh, the angle seat that's 45 minus uh, five divided by two. So that's the angle of the failure wedge. That's the angle of the failure wedge. So if your failure, failure plan is, uh, looks like this, that will be the angle of the failure wedge. And again, for the passive case, uh, sigma edge prime equal to K, P times sigma way prime. So sigma way is the same, and but we need to change to the uh, passive as pressure coefficient. 
so for the passive condition, now the horizontal strength becomes sig one and vertical strength becomes sig three. Since in the previous slide, we, we have uh, calculated the expression for the uh, sigma one and sigma three. So through the conversion, we are able to express the sigma one uh, in terms of this form. So I think maybe that's in the uh, slide 11, this one, you see, we express a sigma three in terms of sigma one. So now we're able to do the conversion we are able to do the conversion uh, from that expression. We express sim one in terms of sim three, and here uh, that's what we get. So through conversion, uh, this will be the expression for the passive plus pressure. Uh, this this expression. So that's another really important conclusion of this uh, lecture. So that's that's the expression to calculate uh, the passive plus pressure. So Kp sim, uh, times sim three plus two c times square root of Kp. Uh, so this sim three that's equal to single wave as well. And that's the expression for uh, lateral pressure coefficient. So that's one plus sine phi divided by one minor sine phi. So we notice that uh, the Ka that's one plus minor sine phi divided by one plus sine phi. So this Kp that's the reverse of Ka. So that's the reverse of Ka. So similar as the active case, but now the failure plans of the passive Rankine states are inclined at an angle of 45 minus phi divided by two to the horizontal. So the soil has yielded in the passive state and is in plastic equivalent. So all these are based on the geometry uh, from the uh, Mercer code. So again, the previous case that's for the uh, cohesion list case because we uh, uh, we didn't consider cohesion uh, for the passive case. So for the co cohesive soil, so this will be the here. This will be the uh, stress distribution in the passive state. So now the passive pressure could be expressed as uh, Kp times sigma z. Here, Kp times sigma z plus two c times square root of Kp. So which is the combination of the passive pressure without cohesion and cohesion uh, pressure. So this time the cohesion acts in the positive way. Uh, so it's a contribute to the total passive uh, pressure. But in the active case, so you have to minus that, uh, that cohesion component. So if we look further, the total, uh, the total thrust, uh, the or the total passive thrust PP uh, per unit of length of the wall is given by the area of this passive pressure distribution, and this area, this area. So if you you are required to calculate the force or thrust, then you just uh, take the, the the sum of the area of the uh, pressure uh, diagram. So that's the the whole area. So that area equals the force from the pressure distribution per unit width into the page. So that would be uh, uh, this component. So it's obviously Kp gamma h uh, times h divided by two. So Kp gamma h times h divided by two. So that's uh, this triangle contribution. And then the cohesion con contribution will be two uh, c times uh, square root of Kp and times is h because the height that's an h, so that's that will be the thrust. And also, uh, for some questions, you are required to calculate the line of action of the passive thrust. Because currently, we don't we only know the magnitude of the thrust. We don't know where is at which line, which point, which line is acting on. Is acting here or acting here or acting here? So, so what we need to do we normally. Uh, if we are required to find line of action of the passive strength, then we are able to take the moment equivalent uh, for a point in the soil surface. So that's the point in the soil surface. So we're able to take the moment equivalent 
So we take this force triangle and the force for this triangle, the force, uh, the, the line of action, we, we obviously we know that will be one third from the bottom. So it will be two thirds from the top. So uh, we work out this pressure and also work out the moment, uh, moment arm. So that's, uh, in that way, we take the, the moment. And this one, this rectangle, we know is acting, the force is acting in the center. So we, we take the error and also we take the moment arm. So that's the one, one end of this uh, moment equivalent. The other end will be the, the passive thrust times, uh, times the distance. So the distance could be uh, expressed, I would say. So PP times J equal to the, uh, the expression we have calculated. So in this way, according to the moment equivalent, uh, we are able to find the line of action of the passive thrust. Uh, we will be able to have the more practice uh, for uh, to do such calculation to get the line of action in the practical class. Yeah, sorry, in the tutorial class. And also, uh, it's worth to note that the Rankine's original theory, the wall surface is assumed to be uh, smooth and vertical. So it, it ignores the slopes of the wall and any friction which may develop between the wall and adjacent soil. So normally this theory uh, results in a bit poor estimation of active pressure and underestimation of the passive pressure. So that's for the uh, Rankine's uh, theory. Okay. So can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, in, in this case, we get a question like this. Which value will, will be given? So in this case, you, you see the C5 will be given and the, the, the dimensions will be given. So according to this friction angle, you are able to calculate either Ka or Kp. And, and also maybe the gamma, gamma or gamma prime will be given. So you are able to calculate uh, sigma z according to the gamma and the, the soil height. So if, so if those values are given, you get the sigma z and kp and c is given, then you are able to uh, calculate the passive pressure and also the stress as well. So those, those are the values that will be given. I about to say. Hmm? I about C, is that also given? Yes, C will be given. C yeah, will so, be given. C, right. that's the cohesion of the soil. So normally for the clay, the C, there's a greater value. For the sand or gravel, C is normally zero. So for sand, C is zero. For clay, oh, uh, <coughs> that, that's a greater value. Let's say 10 kPa or 20 kPa. And also uh, later on, I will show, show you more cases. This one, because there's no surcharge on top. So that's simple case. Later on, we will show you the surcharge case. And also sometimes you have to consider the water level as well. The water level, uh, uh, water level affect uh, uh, the soil state. So it's either the saturated or, uh, or dry soil. So you need to use a gamma prime or gamma uh, to do the calculation. But basically it's, uh, it's these parameters that are required to do the calculation. So, um, so to find KP, we'll do one over KA for passive um case is that correct yeah so so you see normally the uh if you do the you if you see for this retaining wall i yeah. obviously the right hand side uh, that will be uh that will be this way right that will be the active case and this hand side that will be the passive, passive. case yeah. passive case so from this hand from the left hand side you are required to use the KP and right hand side, you use the KA. And if you calculate the KA, you'll take the reverse. Or, yeah. And you get KP or the reverse of KP, you get KA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now let's uh, look at the Coulomb theory. So previously we all discussed about uh, uh, the Rankine theory. So both Rankine and Coulomb, Coulomb are the legend in our soil mechanics. So now let's look at the Coulomb theory of mass pressure. We mainly use Rankine theory for the calculations, and this Coulomb theory is to uh, provide more option uh, of 
the analysis. So Coulomb method is a limit uh, equivalent method, and it can consider the wall and soil friction. So remember for the Rankine theory, uh, the one limitation or one assumption is that you have to assume it's a smooth wall, which means there's no friction between the wall and soil, but that's not the case for Coulomb theory. So Coulomb that consider, can consider this friction and even not work a wall. So the wall could tilt, could be uh, this way, or wall could be tilt in this way. Um, similar as Rankine's one, uh, here are some assumptions. Uh, that's, uh, that's a few assumptions uh, of the Coulomb theory. So the failure surface are assumed to be uh, plain, although the shape of failure surface are actually curved. So you assume that's a plain failure surface. So this is similar as the Rankine theory. Uh, but actually, uh, if you do the, some uh, experiment or numerical analysis, uh, you will find the actual the failure surface uh, is is curvy. It's very nonlinear. So this area, this area is involved in making the plane surface assumption. But uh, for the active case, uh, this area is really small. So but in the passive case, uh, the area is is only small, only for the wall soil friction angle delta is less than uh, 0.5 times five finds the friction angle of the soil. So it's better not using Coulomb's passive pressure unless um, this delta is less than uh, 0.4 times five. Otherwise the solution is already estimated. Uh, and also when this uh, delta uh, equal to zero, so delta is the soil wall friction angle, soil wall friction angle. When this delta comes to zero, then the Coulomb theory gives the identical results to the Rankine theory. So when the wall is vertical and the soil surface is uh, horizontal. So for some cases, it's like the Rankine theory, that's a special case of the Coulomb's uh, theory. So this is a uh, free. So now we are uh, firstly, again, as a Rankine's uh, case, Firstly, uh, we talk about the cohesionless soil, so C equal to zero. And next, uh, we talk about the cohesion, cohesion soil, uh, which so the C won't be equal to zero. So that's for the clay or uh, finer, finer silt. So that's the, for the cohesion soil. Uh, for the cohesionless soil, so that would be roughly the, normally the sand, sand and gravel. Sand and gravel. So this is a free, day, free body diagram of the soil failure wedge between the wall uh, for the Coulomb's active pressure and for the cohesion list case. So it's a it's far more complicated. We can see it's far more complicated than the Rankine's case. You see, we have a slope for the Rankine's one is always flat. And also here, the wall that's inclined as well for Coulomb's one. Uh, that's, that's just only the vertical wall. And also we, we have the, the friction, we, uh, fr friction between the wall and the soil. So the force and interfaces are, we have the wall surface AB. So that's wall surface AB and it's inclined at alpha. So that's alpha uh, to the horizontal. And we have the trial uh, failure surface BC. Uh, this Coulomb's method, we only know it assumes a plan failure surface, but we don't know, but by now we don't know where it is. So it's just like trial error analysis. So we just take one special case. We just assume it's the BC for other case. So next you are able to uh, assume another one or even another failure plan. But eventually you have to form a closed uh, force triangle. So that's the trail and uh, error analysis. So for this case, we just assume it fail along this, uh, this, this line, the BC, and it has angle seat to the horizontal. This is angle seat to the horizontal. And we have the source surface AC. 
so surface AC. Uh, let's add bait, angle bait to the horizontal. And the trail failure surface BC uh, can sit uh, to the horizontal. Uh, now, if we look at, uh, uh, if we look at uh, the force from the force side, we have the weight of the, this wedge. So this triangle wedge. So the, the same weight, obviously we know is always pointing downward. So we know the direction of the weight. So through some way, we are able to calculate this uh, weight of the soil wedge. So once we know the shape, so we know by now we know the magnitude and direction of W in, the, uh, in this uh, free body diagram. And also uh, the wall reaction P. So this wall reaction P is angle delta to the normal land and below it, below it. So, so that's like common sense. You have the, the self weight of the soil. So that's the one acting downward in this direction. So you have to have some resistance force uh, here because it is the inclined in this direction. So it has to be pointing upward. It can't be pointing downward. Otherwise uh, it won't reach uh, equivalent state. So it has to be pointing upward and this angle uh, with angle of uh, soil wall fridge angle. And also you have the soil reaction uh, here, soil reaction at the failure plant R and angle phi to the normal land and below it. So by now the magnitude and only the magnitude and direction of W are known. So the triangle, the force uh, can be drawn. So we know the W that's in the downward so now if we draw the force uh, triangle, we know the W, that's the downward direction. And this R, we just uh, trans translate to here. And that will be the, this is the angle, the C minus phi through some uh, geometry relationship. And that's the P direction. So P, we move the P here, and that's the corresponding uh, included angle. So in this way, we are able to form a closed closed uh, triangle shape. So according to the statics, we know if we take these three forces, then everything has to equal to zero. So the triangle how to close. So if we know or can compute what the friction force is, uh, and if we know or estimate what the weight of the soil wedge is, and if we assume an angle of friction between the wall and the soil, then we can back calculate the force between the wall and the soil. So eventually, we need to do some trial analysis to get this uh, capital P value. So if we do, so you see that's the, that's the one we have taken. So that's the, that's the BC, that's the one we have taken. So we are able to get one value. But actually, if we just assume another Philip plan, then we can calculate another P. So let's say this is P0. But if you assume another one, you will get the P1. If another, the failure plan is here, then you will get P2. So similarly, you get the P3, P3. So that's all according to the geometry or relationship. So if we do that for a variety of assumed failure plans, we can assume multiple uh, failure plans then what we can draw is a kind of uh, like a curve. And that's the curve for the force, force P and versus the seed. You, also, uh, you have the different plan, the plan, this seed angle will change as well. This seed, so that's the corresponding seed angle, seed angle as well. So what we find is that the failure plan that corresponds to the maximum force predicted that's the correct one. So for the this active case, we need to find the maximum force, maximum um, P. So that's the corresponding uh, active uh, earth pressure. Oh, sorry, active force acting on the wall. And again, we have this expression PA equal to half K times uh, gamma H, uh, H squared. 
So uh, the engineers and mathematicians later said, uh, he, uh, we can use calculus to just solve this solution correctly because it's always maximization uh, or an optimization problem. So by taking the derivative of that function, so we end up with uh, this function here, right here, or this expression right here, which is basically the lateral expression coefficient. So all these angles in this equation uh, comes from the geometry of the problem. So this expression is the same, but this uh, within this formula, this Ka, that's from the previous uh, triangle, uh, the force uh, diagram, we're able to get the expression for this Ka. Uh, and also the point of application of the thrust is not given in the Coulomb theory. So it is assumed, still assumed to act at one third uh, above the base of the wall. So that's for the uh, active case. So for the Coulomb's, Coulomb's passive case, uh, again, for the cohesionally soil, the magnitude of and direction of W are known as well. So similar as the uh, active case. So we can do the same thing and the triangle of force uh, can be drawn here. So this time uh, we compute uh, the polygon of force, uh, which is a triangle with W known in the direction and magnitude. So again, uh, a number of 12 failure plans. So we just uh, trail the different uh, failure plans. And so accordingly, the seat angle will change as well. So it's either increase or decrease. So for each failure plan, according to the geometry relationship, uh, we are able to get calculate the force P, we get the different force point. So for this time, for the passive pressure, we just take the minimum one. So the minimum point, uh, the failure plan that corresponds to the minimum P, that's the real uh, failure plan. Again, this problem can be solved analytically and the solution is given uh, by this formula. And that's the expression for the, that's the expression for the, for the KP. So it's similar to the, this version is quite similar to the active case, but some of the signs uh, of the symbols in the equation are different. So that's the, some, uh, so that's the column method for the cohesion list case uh, for, your, for your reference, yeah. How we find the alpha, um, and all the other angles, like the, like the um, the per angle um, provided to us within the question. Or so this we find so, them. So the alpha will be will be given. Okay, alpha. so 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 you see once you 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 see this wall. So normally this geometry will be given. So the alpha will be given as well. So oh, alpha it's will theta be given. And beta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. So that's oh, alpha. That's beta. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you. And also for for this. Uh, Lectures, the main point and the main uh, part will be the Rankin's Rankin theory. So this uh, column theory, uh, mainly for your reference or double check the, the calculations. Yeah. So for the, again, uh, if we continue, so other methods, uh, so other methods have been proposed for the KP, for the passive as pressure coefficient, where the curve part is assumed variously uh, to be a circular arc and uh, uh, or logarithmic spiral. So this table uh, below shows a uh, comparison of the values of different uh, delta. So different delta. So that's the wall and soil friction angle. So if for the different delta, we can see that there's a lot of variation between the values from the different method. So the measure from other scholars, from other scholars, and the one uh, obtained using Coulomb's uh, measure. So the Coulomb, so this is the Coulomb's measure. So Coulomb's measure overestimates the passive uh, resistance uh, due to neglecting the curvature of the failure surface. So remember uh, that one. So it assumes just a a line of uh, just a straight uh, failure plan, but actually it's, uh, it's like this, the curved shape. 
roughly accuracy. So all the other researchers, uh, they have considered more reasonable uh, failure plan. So they have the more accurate value. So the, and also we noticed that the over, over prediction becomes serious when the data is large. So with the increase, so when the data is equal to zero, you see the, the colon's prediction is not very bad, all has the similar way, this identical value. And even when the data angle is small, you see that's uh, there's a not, the prediction from colon's matter is not too bad at all. But with the further increase, you see, and the, the difference becomes greater. And when data comes 30 degree, you see, that will be a huge uh, discrepancy uh, for KP, it, for the KP from the colon's measure and also from the, uh, with that from the other measure. So again, for the assumed, if there's any assumed high wall friction, so high wall friction, So that's equivalent to the seat, uh, sorry, delta angle. Uh, delta, um, delta angle is uh, big or just a big uh, delta angle. Uh, don't use, uh, don't use this column's uh, passive uh, earth pressure uh, coefficient to do the calculation. So column, column's method does not tell you uh, how the lateral stress are distributed so often Again, a triangle distribution, as Rankin's case is assumed. So now we uh, comes to the co cohesion, uh, co uh, cohesive case. Uh, this is even far more complicated because we have more uh, more terms, two more components compared with the previous uh, cohesionist case. So for columns active pressure for cohesive soil. So it's assumed that the tension, because we learned before previously in the, from the top of soil, surface of soil, we have the uh, tension crack. Now we have the tension zone and we have the tension crack. So it's assumed that the tension cracks occur to a depth of zero, Z zero. Uh, Z zero. And failure plan is tend from the point B so that's, again, that will be the assumed failure plan. So that's extends from the point B and to C. And we have the wall adhesion or cohesion, CW. So that cohesion comes uh, from the, uh, the cohesion soil with the soil. So you have the cohesion force acting uh, on, the, acting on this, uh, this uh, diagram. Uh, so that's a so that's CW, and you also have the cohesion C acting. So that's act cohesion C acting on the soil soil interface. So this is the soil wall interface. This is the soil soil interface, and when C when uh, CW and wall surface AB. So that's the wall surface AB. That's inclined at alpha uh, to the horizontal. And trial failure surface BC, that's at the seat. So that's the BC, that's the seat to the horizontal. And so surface AD uh, at the bait uh, to the horizontal. And for the forces, we have, again, we have the weight of the wedge uh, W and wall reaction P that uh, uh, at angle delta below uh, the normal line, below this normal line and constant cohesion component uh, of resistance along the wall. So we have CW, CW term equal to CW times uh, this EB, the length EB, E and B. So that gives you the cohesion component. So that's a force component and CW, that's the pressure uh, component. And also saw reaction and this failure plan R. So similarly, uh, the capital C equal to C times uh, BC. So we are able to get the force uh, component, cohesion, force, capital C. And I know the magnitude and direction of W, uh, CW. So CW, C, and W. So we know the magnitude and we also know the direction. 
So the only unknown is the, this the P, uh, this the P and the R. So we don't know the, uh, we don't know the magnitude, but we know the direction because we know the theta and phi. So um, we only don't know the magnitude. So we are able, again, uh, we are able to form uh, this uh, force, uh, uh, force diagram. So the magnitude of P can be determined from this force diagram, again, from a number of 12 surfaces. So similar as the previous case, but for cohesion is soil. So if we uh, look at, so previous one, that's for the active case. For the passive case, we are able to repeat the same as the cohesion list case. So this time, the magnitudes and direction of W, so W uh, and the C and CW uh, are known. And again, we are able to draw the force diagram here. So that's the force diagram. And according to the 12 Philippines, uh, the failure thrust P could be uh, determined because we only, uh, we know the direction of P and R, but we don't know the magnitude of P and R. Through the trial analysis, we are able to get uh, the value of P, capital P. So that's for your reference for the columns, uh, passive and uh, active and passive as pressure uh, calculation. So now uh, let's uh, go back and look at the figure. So now there's some other, uh, let me see. So now there's uh, some other cases. So this figure shows uh, we have the uniform lateral earth pressure acting on the wall uh, due to the presence of surface charge Q. Surface charge Q. So earlier cases deals with the lateral pressure due, due to the self-weight of the retaining wall. So it's only the self-weight of the soil element. So there could be uniformly distributed load on the surface, and this can also exert the lateral pressure on the wall. The uniformly distributed load is extensive and assumed to be transferred all the way down vertically. So there won't be any reduction in the, uh, in the pressure. So, but uh, normally in the reality, uh, uh, when you when the force will, uh, uh, with the with the depth become deeper and deeper, then the influence will be smaller and smaller. But we just assume this value doesn't reduce at all. So we just assume it's a constant uh, pressure acting all the way down vertically. So the additional lateral active or passive pressure due to the surcharge acting on the wall are given as uh, sigma A equal to KAQ or sigma P equal to KPQ. So both for the, so if you consider this set, so uh, if you have this surcharge, then it will be uh, the uh, KPQ. If you have the surcharge on top here, then if it's that's active case, then that will be the KAQ. And the additional, active or passive thrust acting on the wall of the height H uh, is um, PA equal to KA times QH uh, and PP equal to KP times QH. So again, you see the force that will be the area of the pressure uh, diagram. You see, uh, let's take the, uh, this case, the active case. So this is the KAQ and this H. So this, uh, this uh, rectangle, if we take the area, that's the KQ times H, and gives us the thrust or the force uh, acting on the wall. So if you are required to calculate the thrust or force, just uh, take the area of the pressure distribution that gives you the uh, corresponding value. So uh, if we move the wall away from the soil, so if we move the, so that's a, an important uh, diagram. So originally, normally the soil, normally the soil is in the KO state, right? Uh, because it's uh, uh, in the equivalent state. So originally the soil is, if it's in it's intact soil and the wall doesn't move at all, then that will be in the KO state. So if we move the wall away from the soil, so what we see is that K would gradually reduce 
it would reduce. And also you just relieve the pressure. So what, so then it will eventually reduce and hit a constant value. So that's the constant value is Ka, and it will never change again. So that's the failure condition. And we call that the active failure condition. It means that we have developed the shear plane in the soil and lateral earth pressure coefficient can't be reduced any more than the Ka. On the other hand, so if we move the wall towards the soil, then this Ko gradually increase. And it's going to reach a peak, going to reach a peak here. And it's going to level off and not increase anymore. And that peak is what we call the passive failure condition. And at that point, we generate a shear plane in the soil. And the soil is just sliding around their shear plane. And it will not produce any larger uh, earth pressure coefficient than this Kp. Than this Kp. So now uh, here, uh, I would like to just uh, list a few, a couple of conclusions. So in general, for the active condition, the Ka is going to vary anywhere between uh, 0.2 to 0.4. And for the passive condition, it's going to vary anywhere between the three and 10. In other words, a little soil element is feeding more stress in the horizontal direction than it is in the vertical direction uh, when we in induce a passive loading on a soil. Because, uh, Kp equal to sigma h uh, divided by sigma wave or sigma h prime divided by sigma, sigma wave prime. So the sigma h is much larger is much larger than this uh, sigma wave. Uh, and also the passive pressure is much larger than the active pressure by orders of magnitude. So you see, so, um, and that's a good thing. And we use the passive resistance all the time to keep the stuff from tipping over. So if we were to mirror the at rest, uh, lateral earth pressure is going to be uh, between 0.2 and 0.6 with an average of 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, in other words, under normal circumstances, the horizontal stresses are roughly about the half of the vertical stresses. So normally, the sigma h or sigma h prime will be uh, half sigma wave prime. So that's the, that's the normal case. I would like to, uh, summarize just a couple of things regarding lateral earth pressure analysis in the real world. So uh, first of all, we generally recognize that the ranking method is going to give us a conservative uh, estimate of lateral earth pressure, which means uh, it's going to predict the large active pressures and it's going to predict lower than actual passive pressures. So a lot of engineers like it uh, because it's going, it's giving them some conservative estimates. It's very simple and it's very easy to use. Uh, the problem is that uh, because of that conservatism, uh, you are spending a lot of extra money uh, to beef up your retaining wall, which may not need. And if that's the case, then if uh, that's affecting you, then you may want to use a different measure. So for the engineering design, we not only need to consider the accuracy, uh, we also need to consider the safety. So for some design, we have to do the conservative design. So this conservatism to some way, that's, a, that's good, but it's over conservatism, then that's, you, you, that's bringing the trouble, the cost of budget. So you don't want to cost more money. Uh, that's you, uh, too much. So if it's already safe enough, so you have to find a balance uh, for, the, for the design. So, and the second one, both measures are going to assume a linear failure surface. But we, what we have observed uh, through the experimentation and observation is that the actual failure surface has a little curvy uh, portion so in the bottom. But for the rest of the way, it's pretty linear, just like what Paul theory uh, would predict. So, uh, you know, the final conclusion is that for the active case, the assumption of no friction between the wall and the soil, so isn't really a bad assumption. So we don't lose too much from that. So what we learned from the research is that uh, the wall friction does not affect the active case 
uh, very much, but it has a significant impact on the passive case. So for the passive case, we may need to especially consider the friction between the wall and the soil. So what method uh, do we use bring us to the last uh, bullet point? So a lot of engineers use the Coulomb's method for the, for the active case and use Rankin's method uh, for the passive case because it gives them a very, uh, very good, very accurate estimates of the active pressures. But then they will use Rankin's method uh, because they feel uh, it's a bit uh, conservative. So if you want to consider the friction uh, on the wall, then you're able to use some nonlinear method like the log spiral method. And you can find that in most soil mechanics uh, textbooks. So that's a, that's a few uh, a summer, a few uh, bullet points uh, for, uh, for your information. And finally, this is, uh, this is very, uh, how to stress that. This is a very important part of the, uh, this lecture. So normally we are required to use the ranking, ranking method to do all the calculations. Ranking method or ranking theory to do the all the, all the calculation. And these are the, I already summarized the seven steps to solve a lateral pressure problem. So if you are familiar and fully command those seven steps, you can solve all types of lateral earth pressure calculation problems. So we have to be careful here. So let's uh, just uh, go through one by one. So firstly, we draw and label the problem. So including the soil layering, the geometry of the wall and any water uh, behind the wall. So sometimes the question, uh, it just uh, gave, gave you a diagram. Sometimes it doesn't give, provide you a figure. So you need to draw uh, in roughly in scale and also label the different, if you, you have the different soil layers, let's say two layers, top is sand, bottom is clay, you have to label the dimensions and label the type of soil. And it's also better just to label the corresponding property uh, on that figure as well for your good reference. And in addition, if there's any water table uh, at any position, let's say it says it's four meter uh, below the ground, so you have to label the water table and put the dimension, put the, uh, the dimension of four meter uh, to that figure. Because that's a really important consideration in the later calculation. So that's the first part. Uh, the second one, we select, then select your lateral earth pressure case. So by now you need to determine uh, which, one, which case you are required to calculate, whether you are required to calculate active case passive case or at rest case. So normally that's the three cases uh, you are required uh, to calculate. And then given your response to the second point, then you just uh, compute the lateral pressure coefficient K accordingly uh, for each layer behind the wall. Uh, because the wall will move eventually. So normally you are required to calculate either the Ka or Kp so in the, in the third step. Next, in the fourth step, so now you need to compute and plot the same way prime at the soil layer boundaries and any transitions uh, behind the wall. Soil layer boundaries and any transitions behind the wall. So which means if, the, if it's the boundary between the sand and clay, then if it's soil surface, so you see, let's say if the two layers, you need to calculate the same way here, same way here, because that's the soil surface, that's the boundary between the soil and air. So if that two different type of soil, then you need to calculate the same way here. And that's the bottom boundary, you need to do the calculation as well. So if you have some water here, then you need to calculate the corresponding the same way at the point as well, because that's the one, that's the VR. Uh, there will be some transitions and transition would occur. And also uh, make sure to account for any induced 
stresses on top of the wall in addition to the geostatic stress. So if you have some surcharge, you see if you have some surcharge uh, on top of the wall, then you need to do calculate, uh, then you need to add that term to this same way prime as well. So this is the, this step is the number one key step in solving the lateral pressure problem. So that's the, that's the really important uh, step within uh, these seven steps. Uh, now we just uh, go to the step, step five, uh, compute the horizontal stress on the wall from the soil. So this is quite simple. We just uh, multiply the same way, uh, uh, computed in the last step by the corresponding K uh, computed in the step three. So you just uh, multiply same way times. Uh, so it's either Ka or it's order, either Kp, and then you get the corresponding uh, Pa or Pp, the, the horizontal stress or the lateral plus pressure. So that's the step five. And then the sixth step will be, if there's any water, if no water, then you can omit uh, the step six. So if there's any water behind the wall, then you make sure to cap, compute the hydrostatic uh, stress. Uh, and this one, P equal to gamma W times H. Uh, H is the, uh, you see the, the distance from the water surface to the, to the position you want to calculate. And here, just be careful. You calculate the PP, uh, the gamma W H, and you get value P, that's it. You don't need to calculate. You don't need to multiply Ka or Kp again, because it's a hydrostatic. So remember in the second slide, I showed you, it's the hydrostatic uh, uh, material. So sigma H and sigma V are equivalent. So you don't need to calculate. Uh, you don't need to multiply this k again. So here you have to be careful uh, for the hydrostatic state. And finally, uh, if you sum the area of the sigma edge uh, prime and hydrostatic uh, pressure distribution, then you are able to get the equivalent lateral force acting on the wall. So let's say if your sigma edge prime, that's a not a very good drawing, but you know what I mean. So if your sigma edge prime diagram looks like this, then you just uh, take the area. So you, you divide by a few uh, typical shape, so like triangles and rectangles, and just uh, sum the area that gives you the force, equivalent lateral force acting on the wall. So if you just follow these seven steps <coughs> that I've listed right here, then you can solve any lateral pressure uh, problem. Now, uh, I just uh, have you to just uh, go through just one typical example to help you to understand uh, the theory and how we apply uh, the Rankine theory to do the calculation. <clears throat> so this one, we have a sheet pile wall. So that's the wall here uh, are given in the figure below. So this is good because the, you see, uh, we, for when, when, when we just, uh, do the calculation for the problem. We just uh, uh, remember those seven steps. So this is good. By saying this good, I mean, you see this figure, the dimensions, uh, the drawings is already provided and, and labeled correctly. So roughly it, the first step has already been provided. So the soil condition uh, next to the sheet pile wall given in the figure below, the surcharge. So we have the Q, so you see there's some additional induced strength. So this one, we, we have to consider. Previously, it's all self-weight of the soil that generates that pressure. So a surcharge, surcharge pressure of Q equal to 50 kilonewton per square meter uh, applied to the soil surface behind the wall. So it's only applied uh, on the right-hand side. It's not on the left-hand side. So we have to uh, check carefully. So we have two different types of soil. We don't know uh, what's the type of soil, but it's soil one and soil two. So soil one uh, 
uh, uh, it's, uh, it's already mentioned. So that's the sand above the water table. So you see, that's the water table here. So above the water table is the dry soil. Below the water table, that's sand right there soil. So a sand above the water table is a cohesion. So you see for the sand soil or gravel, it's cohesion, that's zero. So C prime equal to zero and friction angle uh, 38 degree and gamma that's uh, 18 kilonewton per cubic meter and for soil too. So by the way, uh, here, even if uh, we insert a wall here, so here that will be soil one as well, you see. So here, you see, above this water level, this will be soil one, and this will be the soil two as well. So for soil two, a saturated clay, uh, we have the C prime equal to 10 uh, kilonewton per square meter and five prime, that's uh, 28 degree. And gamma S80, uh, that's uh, 20 kilonewton per cubic meter. So we are required to uh, plot distribution of active pressure uh, behind the wall and passive pressure in front of the wall. So this is called, this is uh, obviously, uh, this is the, uh, they, which one is the passive case and which one is the active case. So obviously if you apply some surcharge or occurring sample weight of soil, there's a tendency for the wall to move uh, leftward either move or rotate uh, leftward. So obviously in this case, the, this right, this, the right hand side, that will be active case or passive case. Active? Yeah, active case. So the left hand side will be the passive case because you're trying to uh, compress the soil. So this side will be the passive case. And the right hand side, that's because that will be the, the soil will have the extension. Uh, false. So that's the active case. So that's, by now we already complete the two step. You see, first one, draw and label the problem and then select the type of lateral pressure. So we need to calculate the active case. So we have to calculate the Ka in the right hand side of the soil. And we have to calculate the Kp for the left hand side of the soil. So that's the step two. Then if we follow the step, so what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the K. So we need to calculate the Ka and Kp. So for the soil one, so Ka, uh, remember this formula. So the Ka will be one minus sine phi divided by one plus sine phi. So we get this value. And Kp, that's, uh, that's the reverse. Kp, that's the, that's the reverse of Ka. Or if you would like to do the calculation, Kp equal to one minus sine phi divided by one plus, uh, one plus sine phi divided by one minus uh, sine phi. So that's the soil one or soil two. Uh, soil two, we have the different uh, friction angle. So that's 28 degrees. So we are able to calculate the Ka and Kp as well. So by now we already, completed uh, three steps already. You see, uh, that's already step three. So step four, that's really important. Step four, uh, we have to calculate the vertical effective stress. So for the uh, each layer boundary and also for the transition point. But before that, uh, maybe I would like to just list the formula for the active pressure uh, that we developed in the previous slide. So this one is for the active pressure calculation uh, and also another one that's for the passive pressure calculation. So that's uh, for our uh, later reference. So by now uh, we start to just uh, go for the step four uh, to compute the simple way. So here I just uh, put the figures uh, on the left hand side. Because uh, the right hand side part that's to calculate the active uh, pressure. And the left hand side 
So in the left hand side of the wall, that's the uh, passive pressure. So now we, so if we would like to calculate the, the same wave prime, so we have to find, uh, we have to find some typical uh, or critical point. So obviously the source surface, uh, that's one uh, typical point. And then all the way down, uh, now we look, look in the uh, right hand side, all the way down, it's only here, the later boundary, that will be another critical point. And also it's, it's overlaps with the salt water surface, which is the good thing. So um, otherwise, if, if we have a water table here or here, then we have to add another point to pretty one, because that will be the transition, uh, transition for the force. So that's the first point and second point. And the third point will be the boundary, the, the bottom, bottom of the soil too. So we know the depth of the three point. So that will be zero and six and the nine, right? So uh, we know the depth. Now we need to just uh, do the calculation for the sink wave prime. So I, I was supposed to just uh, maybe add another column for this uh, calculation table for, for the better reference. Uh, so single wave prime uh, KPA, KPA. Uh, same way prime. So for the surface, so uh, same way equal to uh, same way we just use this uh, this expression. So same way equal to uh, gamma h plus q. So so if dry soil, we use uh, this uh, dry unit weight. If saturated, then we use the effective or submerged unit weight. And H is the distance to the soil surface. And this Q will be any additional uh, surcharge on top of the soil. So obviously for the first point, uh, first for the, for the soil surface, the edge is zero, right? H equal to zero. And we only have this, uh, this Q component and this Q that's 50 kPa. So kilonewton per square meter that's equivalent to kPa. So the simple way, Column. The first point will be the value is 15, right? Uh, and then for the six meter, six meter, again, because we assume this is a surcharge uh, transfer all the way down to the soil. So it's again, we need to firstly consider this term and then we plus the self weight of the soil because the, for the soil one, the unit weight that's 18 is already given. So 18 times six, so that's gamma H, gamma H. So that's the, now this H is no longer zero. So that's a 18.6. So that gives you the simple way for six meter. So it's either above this, uh, just only tiny point above all this six meter. I say it's here and here, uh, the value will be the same. So it's again, one tiny point below this uh, uh, layer boundary will be the same. So that's the same way. And for nine meter, again, we can follow the same way. So 15. Uh, plus 18 times six, and then uh, plus. So in the bottom, in the bottom part, uh, so the, we are provided, you see the saturated unit weight that's 20. So we have to use gamma SAT minus gamma W that gives us gamma prime. So it will be 20 minus 9.8 gives us 10.2. So that's the effective unit weight. So below water, we have to use the effective unit weight, 10.2, 10.2, and only three meter below the water table times three. So by now we already calculate the, the same way for the, uh, for the active case. And then we go to the step five. Step five will be, uh, we 
we use this formula, step five, uh, we use symbol A equal to Ka symbol A, because that's the ideal case. Uh, see, symbol A equal to uh, Ka times symbol A prime minus two C times square root of Ka, right? Yeah, so, so if the dry sort, then we use the, then the symbol A equal to symbol A prime. So for the first case, so now we just, uh, so now we go to the step five. So we put the, if we iterate or we plug in this value, that's same way equal to same way prime. So we plug this value 15 to this formula and this Ka we already calculated previously. So Ka is 0 0.24 and 0 0.24 and 0 0.25 and 0.36. So 0 0.24, times on this one, minus 2c, but we already uh, labeled clearly. You see, for the soil layer one, the c equal to zero. So we don't need to, apply. so yeah, so we can put the ka term here. So that would be the square root of the ka. So eventually we just uh, get this term. So 0 0.24 times 15, and that's the corresponding lateral uh, earth pressure. So that will be the sigma edge or sigma edge prime KPA. So that's only for, so that's for the first point. So the second point, uh, six meter. So six meter because uh, it has a transition uh, because you have the water, then there will be a transition in the force uh, diagram. So we have to consider uh, only one tiny point roughly above this water table and one tiny, tiny point below this water table because there will be a false transition. So again, we, we always use this formula. So that's step five. We always use this formula to do the calculation for the lateral pressure. So you'll see this one, 15. So this one actually we split into two terms because in the soil one, the C is always zero. So it's actually this one, 50 plus uh, 18 times six times Point, uh, 0 0.24. So you know what I mean, right? So 58 plus 18 times 6 times 0 0.24. Because the C is always 0 in the, in the soil layer 1. So we don't need to worry about the second term. So and it's the equivalent to this expression. And we get the value of sigma edge or sigma edge prime. So that's 37.9. So why I label the blue color? Because the blue color, blue numbers in this uh, table, that indicates the vertical effective stress. So that's the values I read here. So the next one will be, so we do the, we take one uh, critical point that's just only uh, below this water table, and but it belongs to soil two, it's not soil one. So again, the vertical strength uh, is roughly the same as this value, this value. But the coefficient we are going to use, uh, because it belongs to the soil layer two, so the coefficient Ka, we need to use 0 0.36. You see, 0 0.36. And also for the soil two, the C is now zero. So, we have, so now we need to consider the, the second term minus two C times square root of Ka. So Ka will be uh, square root of point uh, three six because that's the second soil. So if you do the calculation, you'll get sigma edge prime. And then for the nine meter, so it will be the same as six meter, but uh, there are some soil self weight uh, contribution. So that will be the, again, we use this formula. So 0 0.36 times, uh, Sigma way. So that's the one part of the same way. So you see 58 plus 18.6 and minus uh, 2C. Uh, and actually, we can write this way you see 0 0.36 times uh, 50 plus 18 times 6 plus 10.2 times 3. So that's what be clear, right? So that's the same way, this is same way or same way prime term times Ka and minus 2C, minus two times 
times square root of Ka is 0 0.36. And it gives us a value of uh, 55.9. So you see, we always, when we do the calculation, if we uh, always follow that seven steps, so we are able to easily get uh, the lateral pressure uh, clearly. So, and then that's, uh, so this is for the positive case. So for the active case, so the, for the passive case, again, uh, I'm just going to speed up a little bit. So because of we, this running all the time. So this, again, you see here, there's no surcharge, no surcharge. So no 50 value. So this same wave prime, that will be zero. So what I run here, that's equivalent to the blue color uh, in the next column. So here, and then that's another uh, critical point. That will be later in the race. That will be 18.1.5. Uh, 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 because the, it's the 18, the, the unit weight uh, is already given. That's 18 and 1.5, that's high. So that's a gamma H. So that's the single weight prime. So again, you see, we take one point above the the water table and one point below the water table, but it, it belongs to the different soil. So again, this one, that's a, will be 18.1.5 times 1.5. And the, here, the third point will be uh, 18 times 1.5 and plus 10.2 uh, times three. So since we got the single way, the nice one just uh, use the, the formula to do the calculation. Uh, Sigma p equal to k kp times sin wave prime uh, minus, uh, sorry, plus 2c times square root of ka. So we have to calculate uh, sigma wave very carefully. And then for all the calculation, we just iterate value into this formula. We kept using this formula all the time. So, you, so uh, for the first point, you see first point is obviously uh, sigma wave that's a zero. And in the first layer, the C is zero. So the first point is all obviously that's a zero value. And the second one, second point, the, the KP, KP will be the reverse of KA. So now uh, KP, that will be uh, 4.17 and 2.78 uh, for uh, soil one and soil two uh, separately. So for the second point, we use uh, KP times single way and C zero. So we don't have this term. So we get a value for, uh, for sigma H. And then for the third one, for this, uh, this point, so it will be KP times single way uh, plus two C times square root of KP and KP that's uh, 2.78 and we get value 108.4. Uh, and the last point, so again, you see similar as the active case, we just uh, sum all this uh, single weight prime and times uh, the KP and then plus the two C times square root of KP and we get uh, this value. So that's how we derive the sigma edge for the active case and also for the passive case. But remember, if you go back to the previous steps, so if there's water behind the wall, so that's step six. If there's water behind the wall, make sure to compute the hydrostatic stress. So hydrostatic stress is equal to gamma W times H. So we are able to get this value, but don't need to calculate any, calculate Ka or, or Kp. You don't need to, do, to calculate further. So that's the hydrostatic stress. So, and then step seven, uh, because this one you are not, uh, step seven is to calculate the force, but this one you just, uh, we are required to do the, uh, uh, to plot the pressure distribution. So if we, so if we go back, you see, if we uh, plot all these values for active case and passive case, so 12, you see 12, uh, 17.9 because there's water. So you see there's a, a, a sharp jump for the value. So one, two, three, four. So that's the value 
we calculated previously in that table. So that's the four point we calculated for the active case. But don't forget to add the hydrostatic uh, case as well. So that's the value, another point we calculate for the active case. And then similarly for the passive case, so that's the first point, second point. Uh, oh, sorry, that's the first one. Second, third, and fourth point uh, as well. And then we have the hydrostatic uh, pressure as well. So that will be the uh, active and passive pressure distribution. So if you are required to calculate uh, the thrust or force, then you just uh, do the calculation for the, for the area. So you see, you just calculate the, the rectangle area here and then triangle area here. So, and then another rectangle here and uh, triangle, triangle here as well. So that's what gives you the, uh, the thrust or the corresponding lateral force. So this will be the, so this will be the answer for this question. Um, excuse me, sir. Yeah. May I have a question? So, uh, from from step, uh, from step two. So, like, how how can we determine that whether they are active or passive? So you see, it's just uh, like the common sense. You see, uh, so you can see this figure, right? So yeah. if you according to the self weight of the soil, you see it's 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 blocking the soil in the right hand side. It's higher than the left hand side. So there's a tendency for the more so, so for the soil to push the wall leftward. So, so you can see the soils and the wall will actually uh, tend to move, uh, either just move, uh, translate or rotate to the left hand side. So the right hand side, you will determine right hand side will be the active case, left hand side will be the passive case. And, so, also, and also for the equation, you have the surcharge. So you, you will be even at uh, or to make contribution to this uh, uh, tendency. Yeah, so so that means on, on the right hand side is higher than the left hand side. So yeah. the right hand side will yeah. be active. Yeah. And the left hand side will be passive. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, and also you I see if there's if there if there's if there's no surcharge and you see if the soil level is uh, is the same, you see then that will be chaos state because the is rich is the static is equivalent. There will won't be any soil uh, movement or tendency to move. All right. Yeah. Also, uh, so, so um, like, so um, so to find everything here, basically, we use just um gamma h, and then to put a case, like so, so <clears throat> since over here to doing to dealing with um the active pressure, to do um gamma h and times by k a for yeah. every single point. Yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah. like um? Is that how we do it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. You, you, firstly, you see, you just, uh, you, you know how to get the similar wave prime for each single point. Yeah. And, and then uh, then you have to calculate the, the sigma edge, sigma edge prime. So, but sigma edge prime, you see, uh, sigma edge prime, it has two cases, one sigma A, one sigma P. So you have to follow this formula and this formula. Yeah, wait, so, um, so like, so how come like over here, we um minus the, from the value from here. Like, yeah, yeah. Why is that minus? Why is it minus? Yeah. No, no. Here, you see, that's a, here. That way. Here. One, one, one formula is plus. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Plus, and this one is positive. So you see, for the sigma edge, we always use this those two formulas. So for active, we always use this formula. For the passive, we always use the formula. So that's what I mentioned in the beginning, in, in the previous slide. We, we have to be very careful for those two formulas. Yeah, so, that, that oh. negative. Yeah. Right, wait, so, yeah. Well, like, so, um, like, so how come in part one and part one again, like, um, we didn't use the, um, the minus two times C times square root of KA. So why no, is no, it we, only- No, no. No, no, because uh, is maybe here, maybe a table. So here, point two, we, we use that as well. So, but it's zero, like I mentioned, you see, I put it here, you see? We, this one, we use that, that formula as well, the soil surface, but the C is zero. So this one will be 0 0.24 times 50 minus 
two times zero times square root of uh, ka, which is zero point two four. But this yeah. one equal to zero. Yeah, but like um, till why do you see zero at that point? No, you, you see the soil is. You see, this is a sand soil on the top. Obviously, yeah. it's given in the question. You see, c is zero. You see that I I already labeled. Oh. Okay. So for this area, that's the sand. For yeah. oh, for this area, that's the sand. For this yeah. area, that's the clay. That's the cohesion soil. Oh. So okay. that's why we have to read and label the question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Carefully. Yeah. Actually, that belongs to step one. Yeah. So the other question. So is is this values always going to be given? Yeah. So if the surcharge. Yeah. If the surcharge, then surely it will be given. So some additional uh, conditions, I think you have to be careful. One is the surcharge. One is the surcharge. The other one is the pole, is the water table. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So the water table, be careful about the water table. You stand affect the, the, sim, uh, the gamma prime, and that will affect the symbol edge, and eventually the symbol way. Sim, the symbol way, the symbol way, and eventually the symbol edge. So same way in general, it will express as a gamma edge plus Q. So this Q, if there's no surcharge, then you just omit this term. So if there's a surcharge, then you just add this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a uh, incorporated into the sorry incorporated into the step four actually calculate the same way part. All right. Thank you, sir. No other questions. Okay, so we just uh, we have to be careful for those uh, seven steps. So you will, so maybe you, we have more chance to do the calculations uh, uh, in the tutorial class in combination with those seven steps. Well, so we're going to go over this in tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surely we will uh, practice a lot in the tutorial class. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Oh, uh, hey, sir. Yeah. Uh, are we giving uh, 0 0.24 and uh, 0 0.36? No, 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 you won't. You have to calculate. You see, that's the, that's the step you have to follow. You see, you have to calculate the, the K, K, and KP. So oh. normally, the fresh angle of the soil is given. Uh, is given, then you are able to easily calculate the K and KP accordingly. All right, thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I have to close the session now, so, but if you have any queries, just send me an email.